Hello everyone, I'm Theo Hartzell. In today's video, I want to look at the biblical principle of rebuking in relation to rebuking devils, demons, sickness, infirmity, whatever the case is. We look at the New Testament Bible and we see cases where Jesus and the apostles were going around rebuking devils, sickness, infirmity, disease, and if you're anything like me, I want to figure out, well, if I'm commanded to do that, then how do I do it? What does it mean to rebuke? What is entailed and encapsulated in rebuke? How do I do that as a New Testament believer? In this video, we're going to look at some examples. This is going to be eye-opening for you, and I want you to listen to me because this is going to not only involve demon spirits and evil spirits, but this is also going to apply to sickness and disease, infirmity. You do not want to miss this video. This is also going to be important because I've been making some videos about spiritual authority and power. Well, inside of your spiritual authority and power, you need to know how to exercise it. And part of the way you exercise it is by rebuke or charging or commanding for things to happen. You'll see what I mean. Let's just dig in and get started. One of the first passages that I want to look at is Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 33. And this is talking about Jesus in the synagogue. And there is a man there who has a spirit of an unclean devil. Verse 33, And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And listen to verse 35, And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, that's speaking about the man, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. By context, you can already see what is taking place in a rebuke. But that word for rebuked right there is the Greek word G2008, epitimaio, which according to the word study dictionary means to evaluate, punish, rebuke, or charge. It means desire of restraint. It also means to admonish strongly with urgency and authority. Did you see that? With authority, because that is important. The Strong's Dictionary defines it this way, to censure or admonish, to forbid, charge, or rebuke. In other words, this passage in verse 33 is talking about this man who has a spirit of an unclean devil. In other words, a demon spirit. And this demon spirit is crying out in verse 34 and telling Jesus, leave us alone. Have you come to destroy us? We know who thou art. You are the Holy One of God. And in verse 35, it said, and Jesus rebuked him saying. Now notice that because that is important because it says he rebuked him saying. So one of the first things that I will tell you inside of a rebuke is it is something that you are saying out loud. And according to the definitions, it means to rebuke or charge or to command, in other words. So biblically speaking, this word rebuke, epitomao, means to charge or to command someone to do something. What did Jesus tell the demon spirit to do? He said, number one, hold your peace, and number two, come out of him. In other words, Jesus charges, commands, rebukes, or tells this demon spirit, I'm commanding you by order of decree and declaration to hold your peace. In other words, shut your mouth. 
And the second thing that he charged him or commanded or ordered or decreed or declared for him to do, speaking out loud, addressing him, was he told him, come out of him. In other words, quit talking and get out of the man. I'm telling you what rebuke is, and it's simply to command, decree, declare, order, or charge someone or something to do something. And let's go a few verses down to Luke chapter 4, verse 38, and this is going on in the same story. And listen to me because this is going to be critical and important. And it says, And he arose out of the synagogue, that's the same synagogue we just saw where he just rebuked the demon spirit. And he entered into Simon's house. It's talking about Simon Peter, the apostle Peter. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. Everybody say great fever. And they besought him for her. Now, this is something that I want to highlight right off the bat about the authority principle being housed inside of you exercising rebukes, commands, healing the sick, casting out devils, or whatever it is, that there is a principle of authority at operation. So, Peter's mother-in-law is sick, and the Bible says that they sought Jesus on behalf of her. So in other words, she's kind of incapacitated and can't even petition or ask for help, and they come asking Jesus for help. Why is this important? Because there are many times when people come to me and they have a request or a need or they want something done. I ask them, do you give me permission to speak into your life and in this situation? Are you giving me permission to have an effect, and what am I doing? I am making them authorize and allow me to have permission to speak into their life or to speak into this situation because I want the authority to do so. The last thing that I need is human spirit against human spirit. Now, in the first story, Jesus had enough authority and power that he didn't even ask the man if he needed deliverance. He just commanded the devil, the unclean spirit, and he left. But in many cases and many times when people come to me, I will ask them, can I have permission? Are you authorizing and allowing me to pray about this situation and to speak into this situation? And when they say yes, then I go ahead and pray about the situation. It may be a case where someone is coming on behalf of someone in this story of Peter's mother-in-law, for example. They're coming to me, but by proxy, they are giving me permission and authority to speak in the situation, and now I have the authority, the go-ahead, and then I start making my decrees and declarations. I don't always get that opportunity, and sometimes I just exercise power and authority and dominion and might and get busy doing what the Holy Ghost tells us to do. But in cases where someone comes to you, then get permission or authorization. And I'll say this, that the Bible says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders. So inside of that request and them coming forward, they are granting you permission by simply obeying the word. And in a sense, they are granting permission when they even come to you. But still, I like to make people say it out loud so that me and everybody in the spiritual world and God and devils and demons and everybody knows they have granted me authorization and access to this situation and now I'm about to take over and decree and declare and command and charge and rebuke and do whatever the Holy Ghost wants me to do. Now, let's get back into the story and listen to what Jesus did in verse 39. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now, let me break down a few things in this verse. It says, And he, Jesus, stood over her, the mother in law, and rebuked the fever. That word for rebuked right there is the same word that we already saw, G. 2008, 
epitomao, which means to charge or command or to issue a decree or a declaration, to order for something to have happen. So he rebuked the fever. That Greek word for fever right there is the Greek word G4446 poreso, which means fiery heat, inflamed, feverish, a fever. In other words, she is very, very sick and burning up with a fever. Her bodily temperature is elevated and she is in great danger because the Bible said that it wasn't just a fever, but that it was a great fever. She is in a bad way. Now, this is one reason that I'm even making this video in the first place, because I want to highlight to you that Jesus is standing over her. That means he is over her, looking down on her. It looks to everybody surrounding them that he is talking to her. But the Bible did not say that Jesus spoke to her or talked to her. The Bible actually says that Jesus rebuked the fever. Now, let's think about this for a minute. But the Bible did not say that Jesus rebuked a demon or an unclean spirit. It does not say that Jesus rebuked the mother-in-law. You know what the Bible says? It says that Jesus stood over her and rebuked the fever. In other words, Jesus is talking to and commanding and rebuking the fever just like he would have if it was a demon spirit. One of the reasons that I'm saying this is because there are times where you need to be rebuking sickness and infirmity Disease, cancer, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, lupus, whatever else you're trying to rebuke. And the Holy Ghost is telling you to rebuke that sickness. But what you and I do is we get a little thought running around in our mind. Well, I'm looking at this person and I love this person and I care about this person. I don't want to be sitting here screaming at them and commanding this thing to leave because they might think that I'm saying they got a demon or an unclean spirit. Or everybody else gathered around might think that I'm saying they've got a devil or an unclean spirit or a demon or something else. And yet this Bible passage says that Jesus stood over her rebuking the fever. What does this mean for you and I? It means that when it comes to rebuking fevers, sicknesses, infirmities, diseases, malady, malfunction, any kind of physical ailment or whatever else you want to talk about, you need to be rebuking it, charging it, commanding it, and talking to it no different than if it was a demon spirit. And we are not saying that the person has a demon spirit or that it is an unclean spirit of any kind or any form. The thing that I'm showing you is biblically speaking, the Bible is showing us that Jesus epitomio or spoke to the fever in the exact same way that he spoke to an unclean spirit or a sickness or a disease or an infirmity at all. He is rebuking. It is the same form. It is the same thing. You are doing the same thing. You are commanding that sickness to leave. And the Bible says that it left immediately. Do you know what this means and tells me? This means that you can sit there and literally rebuke a sickness or an infirmity just like you are talking to a spirit or an entity or a person or someone else. You are literally speaking to it no different than Jesus talking to a fig tree. No different than Jesus saying, speak to this mountain and tell this mountain, be thou removed. What is implied in a rebuke is that you open your mouth, you speak out loud or by authority or whatever you're doing, by action, by faith, and you command and tell it and charge it and order it and decree it and declare it what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And the reason that this is important to me is because when it comes to praying for the sick, the infirmed, and the diseased, and people with problems and physical ailments or any other thing, 
I think the New Testament church is way too timid, way too bashful, and way too much pride and way too much ego. This Bible passage is literally saying that Jesus stood over her with the implication that he's looking down at her, talking to her, and everybody gathered around and even the mother-in-law might have looked at Jesus sitting here commanding and rebuking that fever, and everybody could have had the impression or thought, well, is he saying she's got a demon? Well, let me tell you what happened. He spoke to the fever, he rebuked the fever, and she got an instantaneous miracle and got up and started going about her daily chores because she got healed immediately. You know what we ought to do? We ought to check our ego and our pride and just get busy. And I want to help people understand, look, people can help you and rebuke sickness and disease and infirmity and rebuke cancer off of you and rebuke diabetes off of you. And it does not mean there's a problem with you as a person. It doesn't mean that you have a demon spirit. It doesn't mean that you are possessed or oppressed or anything else. We should have the biblical right and authority, just like Jesus, to talk to the sickness or the disease, the infirmity in the body, address it and rebuke it and tell it, I charge you and I command you right now in the name of Jesus to get out of here and leave and don't you ever come back. And you're going to see that this is what the New Testament church was actually doing. But first, let me go on to the next verse in verse 40. It says, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases or different kinds of diseases brought them unto him, unto Jesus, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many. Now I realize that there can be a connection between many of those people being oppressed by a spirit of infirmity or a sickness or a disease. And we can make a connection that many of those ailments and problems were caused by a demon spirit. But I do not want you to miss the point, as we just saw in the previous verses, that it did not matter if Jesus was rebuking an evil, an unclean spirit, a spirit of infirmity that was causing a man's physical problems, or whether he was talking to Peter's mother-in-law who had a fever, and it said he rebuked the fever, in his commanding and decreeing and declarations, Jesus is talking to them and addressing them in the exact same way and the exact same manner. Because when you are exercising your spiritual authority and power and rebuking and decreeing and commanding and declaring for things to happen, it is the exact same process, whether it's a demon spirit or a malfunction in somebody's human body. And let's just read verse 41 again from start to finish. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. In other words, he did not allow them to speak. For they knew that he was Christ. And this goes back to that same principle that when it says that he is rebuking them, he is commanding and charging and ordering and decreeing and declaring them, you hush your mouth. Don't you even talk about who I am. Shut your mouth and don't say another word. And let me give you a few more examples of rebuke in context to show you that this is addressing the devil, demons, sickness, infirmities, and even the physical elements around us. When you go to Jude chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, everybody say the devil. It says, He disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. That word for rebuke right there is the exact same Greek word, G2008 epitomio, which we have already seen, means to charge or command or to give an order, to give a decree, to tell somebody to do something. And here, 
the archangel Michael himself is giving an order to the devil. And in an example that I can give you of reprimanding or rebuking even the elements of the weather around you is from Jesus Christ himself in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26. And it says, And he saith unto them, and that's Jesus, And Jesus saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. That word for rebuke is the same Greek word epitomio that we have already seen. So here, Jesus is rebuking the wind, and Jesus is rebuking the sea or the water itself. What does that mean for you and I? Here is a perfect example that Jesus has been rebuking evil and unclean spirits and spirits of infirmities and foul spirits and foul demons. And when it comes to Peter's mother-in-law, he rebuked the sickness off of her, rebuking the fever specifically. Not a demon, not her. He rebuked the fever. Then we see a case where the archangel Michael is rebuking the devil himself in the name of the Lord or Yahweh. In the New Testament, it would be Jesus. And then we see a case where Jesus is even rebuking the wind and the waves. And in every situation, it is the Greek word epitomio, to rebuke or charge or command or order or give an order. I'm telling you what to do and you better do it. If you are in need of prayer and deliverance from a sickness or an infirmity, you need to resolve it in your mind and just get comfortable with people rebuking that sickness. And it does not mean that you have a devil. It does not mean you have an unclean spirit. It does not mean that you are oppressed or possessed by the devil or a demon or under charge of the devil at all. Just get busy getting healed and getting a miracle in Jesus' name. Now, I want to go to another story in Mark chapter 9, verse 17, speaking about a boy who had a physical infirmity because there was a demon spirit. And let's look at what Jesus did and how he handled this situation. It says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Skipping to verse 24. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Can you see that authority and permission principle working out right there? Because the father of the child is petitioning and standing in place for the son and saying, Jesus, please help us. I'm giving you permission and authority to speak into our situation. We need help. I want you to pray. I want you to cast this devil out. I want you to cast this demon spirit out. Whatever you got to do, but help my son because I love him with all of my heart. He's crying with tears and saying, help me, help me, Jesus, help me. Do whatever you got to do. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him. Notice that. He rebuked. It is the same Greek word, G2008, epitomio, that we already saw. He rebuked the foul spirit. He didn't rebuke the boy. He didn't rebuke the father. It says he rebuked the foul spirit because we understand in this case it is demonic in origin. And notice what is also part of the rebuke. It says, saying unto him. In other words, you are speaking or addressing or talking or doing something to address the spirit or the sickness or the infirmity. And look at what it says. It says, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, and here is the rebuke. Here is what it means to biblically rebuke. Here's a public example. Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, 
come out of him and enter no more into him. Did you see that? He is talking out loud. He addresses the spirit. He gives a charge and he says, thou dumb and deaf spirit. In other words, he addressed who and what he was talking to. He was talking to the spirit. He said, I charge you, number one, come out of him, and number two, enter no more into him. That Greek word for charge right there is the Greek word G2004, epitasso, and you can see that that is almost the exact same word for rebuke, epitomio, and this word for charge in the Greek means to order, command, charge, to arrange. In other words, to put something in its place. And this is important because literally Jesus is telling this demon spirit, you're out of place. Sickness, disease, manifestation that's taking place, you are out of place. Get out of here. And I'm putting things back in order like they're supposed to be. I'm rearranging this young man's life. I'm rearranging this family's life. And I'm putting them back together. And they're going to be healed. And this is going to be a changed family and a changed life. And all this is taking place in the rebuke or the charge or the command that Jesus is giving a decree and a declaration. Devil, I'm telling you to get out. And I'm telling you, don't ever come back and don't you ever try to enter him again, ever. That phrase, come out of him, is dealing with the present right now. Here is what I am charging and commanding you to do. I'm commanding you right now, come out of him. Jesus in the rebuke also said, enter no more into him. That's future tense. Don't you ever come back. In other words, in the rebuke that Jesus has given this dumb and deaf spirit, I am charging and commanding for you to presently, right now, come out of him and in the future, never, ever come back. Don't you ever come back and never, ever try to enter into him again. And listen to what happened in verse 26. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that they said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Did the demon spirit obey Jesus? And was the boy delivered because the demon spirit came out? Yes or no? Was the boy delivered? Yes or no? That Does that mean then that the demon spirit actually obeyed Jesus's rebuke and command? And the answer is yes. Why? Because this goes back to the principle of spiritual authority and power. Jesus had authority and he commanded the demon spirit, I am charging you and commanding you and ordering you, decreeing and declaring for you to get out of the boy right now, at this moment, at this instant, and don't ever come back and don't ever enter into the boy again. And the demon spirit had to obey because Jesus had authority. What does this mean for you and I? It means that you have a biblical command to go and to heal the sick and to cast out devils, to cast out demons. You have already been authorized and commissioned and granted your marching orders to go get it done. And you have authority over the scorpions and powers of the enemy and rulers of darkness. And you have authority, power, and dominion. And it's time for you to get bold and start making decrees and declarations and commanding whether it's an unclean spirit or just a physical infirmity, whichever one, I don't even care. Just get busy doing your rebuke and doing what you've been commanded to do and commanding the sickness and disease and put your pride and your ego to the side. If you've got a sickness in your body and you want people to pray over you and you're afraid, well, are they saying I got a demon spirit? You need to just get rid of your pride and ego and be like Peter's mother-in-law and just get ready to get an instant miracle. If somebody comes to pray for me and there's something that they need to decree and declare and command and forbid and rebuke, 
hey, get after it, man. Get busy. Let's get this thing on because I want to be healed. And if you want to be healed and if you want to heal others, then you need to start following the biblical principle of rebuking sickness and disease and infirmity, whether it is of a demonic origin or a malfunction of the human body. It does not matter. Let me give you another example in the life of the Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 16, starting at verse 16, it says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, notice that, did he talk to the girl? No. He talked to the Spirit. Did he talk to the masters of the girl? No. He talked to the Spirit. Why? Because Paul discerned that the root cause of this whole thing is a demonic spirit of divination. And so Paul turned and addressed the spirit. And notice this, and I know it does not specifically use the word rebuke, but it is the exact same principle at work. Look what Paul said. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. That word for command is the Greek word, G3853, parangelo, which means to transmit a message, to charge, command, declare, to advance an order, charge, or command. In other words, the Apostle Paul, inside of a principle of rebuking, looks at this demonic spirit inside of the woman, and he addresses the demon spirit. He may be looking her in the eyes. He may be facing her and talking to her, but he is not talking to the girl. She's possessed by a demon spirit. And the apostle Paul looks at the demon spirits and gives this demon spirit a charge and a command and an order in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And the Bible says that the demon spirit obeyed. Why? because Paul had authority and power and he commanded the demon spirit to leave and the demon spirit obeyed, which goes back to we need to be rebuking spirits, demons, principalities, powers, infirmities, problems, sickness, disease in people's body because Jesus rebuked a fever, a feverish sickness, just the exact same way that he rebuked a unclean spirit or spirits of infirmity that were causing physical maladies and malfunction in people's bodies. I'm going to bring this video to a close, but I feel it very appropriate to give you some examples, in my opinion, of how you would demonstrate or manifest this in praying for someone, whether it is a demon spirit or not, whether they need healing or whatever's going on or even talking to the weather. There's a tornado coming towards your house. What do you need to do? Your car won't start. What do you need to do? You can talk to the elements. You can talk to people's bodies. You can talk to demon spirits. You can talk to the mountain, the fig tree. You can talk to all kinds of stuff because you're a spirit. So get busy decreeing and declaring and talking. Now, let me give you a couple of examples right now in prayer to show you what I'm talking about. Let me pray over someone about diabetes, for example. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I forbid diabetes to operate in your body right now. I forbid you to have another day of malfunction. I forbid your pancreas to malfunction. I forbid your blood to be out of calibration. Diabetes, I'm speaking to you right now, and I charge you by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get your hands off my brother and sister right now. I forbid you to be in their body another day. I forbid you to be in their body another moment. I charge you and I command you by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to get out and leave them and loose them right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you right now. If you 
you're struggling with diabetes, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be loosed right now. Be loosed right now. Be loosed right now. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, I felt a weight lifted off of me right there in Jesus' name. Cancer, I forbid you to be in that person's body right now. I forbid you to live in that person's body another single day, another single moment. I forbid it in Jesus' name. I take authority and dominion and power over you and by the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, I command you, get your hands off of them. Be loosed right now. Be loosed right now in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can I renounce you and I remove you and I rebuke you. Enter no more into this person's body forever. I command every cancer cell to be removed out of this body. I renounce you and I remove you and I rebuke you in the authority of Jesus' name. Amen. So be it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to you tormenting thoughts and nightmares of the night, and I forbid you to come against this person right now. I forbid you to mess with this person right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There will not be another night of torment. There will not be another night of fear. I command you right now in the name of Jesus to get your stinking hands off of them right now in Jesus' name. I command you to loose them and let them go. Loose their mind, loose their emotions, and loose them from your fear and your torment right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I forbid you. I forbid you to torment them with nightmares in Jesus' name. I forbid you to torment them with evil and persistent thoughts of suicide. I come against you and I forbid it and don't you ever come back and don't you ever halt them again in the authority of Jesus' name, and may the blood of Jesus be against you in Jesus' name. I pray and decree and declare it to be so, and I stand in faith. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Be washed, be healed, and be clean in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I love and appreciate you. You pray for me and I'll be praying for you. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.